Okay, uh, here is a another lecture. It's on marketing in higher education. This is, of course, a, a very broad topic, and I can only touch on uh, just a few of the various aspects of this particular topic, and then we'll get a chance to uh, do some discussion on it later. I am going to, uh, again, share some uh, PowerPoint um, slides with you. So let me um, go to that right now. And um, of course, my contact information is there, um, as is uh, typical with, uh, with my slides. In terms of what I plan to accomplish with um, this lecture, first I'm going to uh, define uh, marketing and then uh, provide uh, several core operating principles that are typical of a higher education uh, institution. I'm going to follow that with some typical goals and marketing units and briefly mention some external and internal trends that are impacting or affecting the whole marketing process. And then I'll end with some practices, processes, and tools associated with marketing as a preload to our uh, subsequent um, discussion on, on this topic. So here is a, a definition by Bob Sevier that um, I really like and adapted for use with this particular uh, presentation. There, really, there is an active link to uh, Bob's um, very nice long article relating to this uh, topic you'll find that link in the uh, references section that's shown at the end of uh, this PowerPoint slide presentation and again I will make the PowerPoint slides available to you uh, within Canvas so if you want to look at them later on and see some of the active links um, you can you can do that this particular uh, definition is really an organizational function marketing is and uh, it requires or involves a set of processes for creating and communicating and delivering value to customers, our potential students, and of course, and often um, their their particular parents. Parents, and it's a way of managing the relationships that uh, institution of higher education has with its customers, or in our case, with uh, with its um, students. There are a series of core operating principles that um, I would like to present to you to think about, especially as you in, begin to involve yourself with uh, that learning project number five and some of the uh, uh, work that you'll be doing in looking at uh, an institution. So Bob Sevier uh, outlined these various core operating principles that I really like and again have adapted them here for basically for uh, higher education. This uh, first one is the fact that marketing must become um, a core operating function. It really is a part of, um, his word was an organization's DNA. I like that term, but it really is the way that an institution has of doing something such as marketing. And you can read down through these bulleted um, lists, but it's, it really is um, marketing needs to be something that uh, cuts across the, the whole campus. It isn't just uh, one uh, unit or one person's responsibility. It must be um, responsibility more widely than just in a particular unit. Our new Vice President for Enrollment Management at Lemoyne College, for example, is in the process of, of figuring out ways of involving the whole campus and what it is that his uh, unit will have some responsibility for. A uh, second uh, principle is the whole notion that uh, as I sort of mentioned with the first one, but that this has to be integrated within and across the, the entire campus. So all of us, faculty and staff and others within a, a higher education organization need to take some responsibility for uh, enrollments, because obviously enrollments are very important, and the dollars that 
come in um, within uh, the marketing effort uh, impact on the whole campus. So that's why it really is a, a campus-wide uh, responsibility. A third uh, principle is that we need to think about creating new approaches, and especially in, in this day of in enhanced use of uh, technology and finding ways of delivering uh, real value to, uh, to the students. Um, it, it's something that is done uh, within involving, as I said earlier, fac faculty and staff, but uh, also thinking in terms of the impact of the marketing efforts on uh, students and, and certainly for freshmen and their particular uh, parents. And then um, fourth, marketing needs to be have as a goal the notion of a lifetime of relationships. That's kind of one of the things that's been talked about in the literature the last um, few years is that you're not, in the, in the case of uh, recruiting freshmen, you're not just recruiting uh, people to start uh, their beginning freshman year in a four-year or five-year college experience. It is recruiting people who really do want to be seniors. They want a long-term relationship with the institution. They want to finish and graduate, but then there also is the whole uh, the whole notion of that they at, at one point will become alumni and looking for the, uh, the support that they might be able to, in the long-term relationship, provide back to the institution. So it really is and must be a win-win organization for for everyone, and the uh, the idea of uh, that an education is has value, an institution has value in terms of the quality education. It's not only about just uh, recruiting students to pay the bills, but thinking through all of these core principles. The the notion that an institution has to have real educational value um, for the uh, for the the student. Here are some typical marketing goals uh, when you are doing some of your work in uh, learning project number five and, uh, and assessing an institution in terms of what they, an institution does in their marketing efforts. My guess is that you will find some of these goals uh, perhaps described slightly different. Um, it'll be interesting perhaps if you're assessing some institutions that Perhaps you can't find you cannot find some of these goals either. But the the whole notion of enrollment growth and retention and um, enhanced uh, market prominence and visibility and ways of making an institution or helping an institution become more um, visible, etc. Uh, often you will find some statement about college mission and that the uh, marketing efforts are tied in some way or come out of the college mission. Um, I would point out for those of you who, who have never had a chance to meet him, Lemoyne College has a director of mission and identity, um, Dr. David McCollum, and so he spends a lot of time working with students and faculty and outside groups to help them understand that Lemoyne College really does have a, a mission and, a, and an identity and my guess is our, our new Vice President for Enrollment Management will work closely with uh, David over the future to make sure that what is done in marketing has a relationship um, to that college uh, mission and identity. Also there are within most marketing efforts or units or organizations within an institution some typical uh, strategic groups or units um, or divisions, however it's defined for an institution that are a part of the marketing effort. You can read this list but these are the kinds of things that would make sense, I would think, as you would think about it, the notions of admissions and a bursar's office and a registrar and a financial aid office and student records and services and institutional research. These are some of the, the uh, common or, or typical groups that are involved in some way with marketing. Um, it'll be interesting for me to read uh, each of your learning 
project number five um, efforts or reports to find out uh, what you discover in assessing an institution in terms of what they are doing for marketing and how they describe it and what, what are the various groups or functions that are involved with it. There are some trends today that are impacting on the way we think about recruiting students and attracting students in our marketing efforts. And one is the whole notion of uh, moving away from standardized testing. I know there's been a lot of discussion in New York about standardized testing. And uh, recently, if you've read the paper, you know that there have been, uh, uh, been a lot of pressure to delay some of the, uh, the testing. And um, to, uh, in a very recent uh, post-standard article, um, the date that all the standardized testing that is being discussed in the state of New York uh, starts fully into effect is with uh, students that today are only fourth graders. That's how, uh, um, how long it's going to take really to implement um, what's happening with uh, standardized uh, testing. There also are some um, parents and uh, groups, uh, again, if you've been reading about this recently within the, at least the state of New York, there are some parents and students who are refusing to uh, follow through with the standardized testing, believing that that kind of goes against um, their their particular rights as a as a citizen. That'll be a very interesting one to um, to watch. The the idea also that uh, an increasing use of homeschooling within the United States for uh, for people for a variety of reasons religious economic and and other but uh, this also creates a problem for uh, officials involved in colleges and universities in uh, marketing is how do you keep track of or find uh, those outstanding students who have been uh, home home skilled they, they don't necessarily fall into easy categories and so I think um, colleges and universities are increasingly trying to find inroads into uh, working with and attracting those uh, young people who are homeschooled. Early admission decisions have been around for many, many years. I know that when um, my children, now in their 40s, were involved in their initial decisions to attend uh, a college, uh, there was a discussion even then about early admission decisions, but this is becoming even more prevalent today. And I recently read about uh, some instant decisions that are made with students who um, uh, or make early contacts with um, with colleges, and uh, some colleges can make instant decisions to uh, hopefully entice them to make a final decision themselves in terms of uh, where they're going to attend. Social networking is becoming increasingly more important in the, the whole notion of uh, marketing and how that is used. And uh, some institutions are hiring people now who are real specialists in uh, social networking because increasingly more and more of the younger people in, um, utilize various aspects of social networking and so any way that you can through a web page or through uh, one of the uh, more common social networking um, Facebook although Facebook is not as prevalent as uh, becoming less so in terms of some of the Instagram and other the other areas where young people today are using social networking. So colleges will constantly be looking for ways of utilizing good web pages, social networking, good at, uh, various aspects of technology. Um, so that, that's a trend that's uh, a real important one to study. Of course, we've, uh, we've actually discussed some of these already, um, the last three, some, discussed some of these already in our Canvas uh, discussion cites the notion of uh, awareness of debt and increasing costs and the notion of an online only colleges and universities and how they are competing um, for uh, students, the idea of for-profit higher education institutions and how they impact uh, colleges and, and more traditional colleges and universities. And there's just no question that today 
we we really are uh, in a race for students, a heavy competition for um, for students, and that that is why increasingly more and more colleges and universities will be ha adding units like a vice president for enrollment management um, or a coordinator of marketing or some some uh, title like that if they don't already have so have such a uh, um, an, a position on campus so it'll be very interesting to see what you discover in your um, learning project number five assessment of marking in some campus to uh, see what what it is that um, that they are doing some of the internal uh, trends that uh, are in existence um, the way of identifying possible uh, in enrollees and admissions and how to how to uh, assess and find inquiries uh, looking at groups by subpopulations trying to target uh, subpopulations these are some of the the things that are happening in marketing um, these days the, the whole notion of concentrating on certain um, cohorts um, perhaps via uh, race or gender or, or some other subpopulation um, way of referring to individuals and trying to find ways of enticing uh, certain individuals uh, via various subpopulations. Um, the, the whole notion that student attitudes and interests are constantly changing and helping the, the marketing people find ways of uh, enticing students via those changing attitudes and interests. For example, uh, increasingly uh, students are interested in, in, in something like uh, some aspect of technology or gaming or something of that nature. And if there are uh, faculty on a campus that are interested in some of those areas, those um, that can be used as an attraction for certain kinds of uh, students. I added in here the notion of the changing financial aid expenditures. Increasingly, institutions are providing more and more financial aid to attract students. However, that is, of course, a double-edged um, sword because um, obviously if you're ex making more expenditures in financial aid, that cuts into what can be um, uh, obtained through the, the student tuition dollars, but that certainly is a, a trend that uh, is noticeable. And issues of diversity and class and, and uh, how do we help to have a more diverse campus, um, those are certainly going to be a part of uh, marketing um, efforts. These are some of the um, recruitment practices and strategies as you do some of your own work. Uh, you may in fact discover some of these specific uh, practices or strategies, various face-to-face -face ways uh, through college fairs and um, open houses and campus tours and uh, uh, campus visits and, and um, all of these, these sorts of things that are, are the kind of uh, areas that you will begin to discover that um, as you look at the marketing uh, for next uh, week uh, one of the YouTube videos is by uh, from Derek Demperio one of the uh, graduates in 2013 uh, of the higher education certificate some of you may even have had a chance to uh, look at or browse through his thesis that I sent to you uh, earlier one of my thesis students and Derek is in the admissions office and within his YouTube video he talks about some of the things that he does each year and how he spends some of his time um, recruiting students and of course uh, electronic communications I'd mentioned that or um, previous slide on the trends the notion of having very effective uh, web pages and, and using social media contacts and and uh, email is another way of uh, for marketing people to make contact with students. Inquiry cards from various kinds of sources coming from high schools, ways that students can um, file 
uh, fill out a card uh, and that gets mailed in and so that still is an important source of uh, recruiting or at least finding students with some interest. Less uh, so uh, these days than in the past but still some general advertising through uh, radio and television and so on. Um, I happen to be public radio listener or listen frequently to WRVO out of uh, Oswego and uh, a lot of the um, notices, you can't really call them advertisements in um, public uh, uh, radio these days, but discussions about um, SUNY Oswego, for example, and, and some other institutions will uh, have uh, support programs and so on, and it's a way of getting the information about that particular college or certain programs within that college out to, uh, to the listeners. And then, of course, there are just plain old individual contacts uh, from alumni and and faculty and and others uh, that individually help a student uh, find or at least be interested in um, a particular college. These are some of the typical um, admission or support uh, processes that that are used to uh, find um, students and. Um, this particular way, uh, what I did here was sort of prov get, uh, providing for you a notion of what happens uh, in the whole particular process. Um, once you find students or garner prospects have a way of uh, identifying them, uh, the, the next step is uh, beginning to assess acquire inquiries that do come in from those various sources that were mentioned in the previous slide. And then uh, processing applicants. There's certainly a, uh, an effort in there of processing applications from uh, freshmen and from uh, transfers. Uh, completing the application, doing the uh, admissions process, um, acquiring by a deadline, uh, deposits, all of these things are important steps within the, um, the whole marketing uh, admissions process. And then um, working with the actual enrollees and facilitating um, graduation. This is this notion of trying to find freshmen who in fact really want to go through the whole process and become uh, seniors. And then seeking and encourage active um, alumni um, Adrian Graves, one of the also 2013 um, graduates um, of the higher education um, certificate, and another one of my um, thesis advisees did a, a wonderful thesis on the whole notion of the alumni office and how it supports what's going on within the whole higher education uh, process. Um, I'm going to end with uh, just pointing out some of the national tools that are available for finding potential uh, students. These are all active links. Should you look at this PowerPoint, uh, these PowerPoint slides at um, a later time, one is called the SAT Search Service. As noted there, it's a free service where uh, students fill out forms um, as they are applying. Um, to take their SATs and as they're filling out a basic information they can designate colleges where they would like their information to be transmitted so that's a, a free service another one is the EOS ACT that used to be called the American College Testing but now it's just called the ACTs and this is the Educational Opportunity Services these are college preparation services and higher education institutions can actually purchase access to students within um, certain uh, criteria or attributes that come out of the, uh, the ACTs. And then finally, the National Research Center for Colleges and University Admissions, they have programs that help higher educators actually target, uh, communicate with, and recruit the uh, right students for their particular college or university or some of the programs within their college um, or university. So it is um, your turn. 
I've given you just a brief introduction to some of the concerns and approaches and tools that are involved with marketing and now it's kind of up to you to uh, do some additional reading and study. Um, obviously as you prepare to do and begin to carry out your learning project number five uh, that will provide back some information so let's utilize the associated discussion site related to uh, this particular lecture and you can provide your comments and observations and uh, questions there um, for uh, each of us to uh, uh, provide some feedback to uh, to one another so um, so here is the, that particular lecture and uh, as I said uh, earlier, I will provide this uh, PowerPoint presentation as a, an active link within Canvas, so you can look at the PowerPoint presentation later if you you are interested. So, looking forward to our discussion on this particular topic, and especially looking forward to um, reading through your uh, learning project number five reports. <laughs>